Come and dream with me. And welcome to this What Do You Want to Watch spoiler cast for the animated adaptation of Image Comics book series. Invincible. I'm Ashley Obley. Joining me today, Tom Blight. Happy to be here to talk about blood and guts. No, we're not talking about AEW today. But okay. uh, <laughs> uh, yes, we will be talking about we will be talking about seeing a lot of blood and guts. Uh, so please be aware we'll be freely discussing anything and everything about the plot, themes, and ending of the TV series. Uh, so if you haven't watched this whole season of Invincible, come back later. So with that said, let's jump to our discussion of Invincible. Uh, created by Robert Kirkman, directed by Robert Valley, Paul Firminger, and Jeff Allen, written by Robert Kirkman, Simon Rekiopa, uh, Chris Black, Ryan Ridley, Christine Levaff, uh, Curtis Gwynn, based on Invincible by Robert Kirkman, Corey Walker, and Ryan Otley, starring Stephen Yun, Sandra O, oh, J.K. Simmons, Zachary Quinto, Gillian Jacobs, Zach Menzoukas, Melise Jiao, Gray Griffin, Kari Patton, Walton Goggins, Andrew Reynolds, and Zazie Beetz. 17-year-old Mark Grayson is just like every other guy's age, except that his father is Omni-Man, the most powerful superhero on the planet. As Mark develops powers of his own, he discovers his father's legacy may not be as heroic as it seems. Uh, Dylan, how familiar were you with... Invincible prior to this? Uh, no, I'd read the f- up until where the show ends, and then I f- I forgot most of what I'd read, other than <laughs> the reveal about his dad. So, in the long scheme of Invincible run of comics, let's just say not very familiar, because <laughs> that's like nothing. Yeah, I think uh, I've I've definitely read more. I thought this lasted longer than this was longer than one. Uh, volume of the the trades. It is just the one two. volume, right? I yeah, don't know. one or two. I'm not sure. Uh, but you know, uh, there there are different things that like sparks back up. Um, watching it, like I remember the the him going to Mars and you know the episode where at the college uh, and that kind of stuff. But yeah, obviously the the Omni Man stuff. Uh, is very memorable from the comics run. Uh, so how did you feel about this adaptation of, to animated? Yeah, it's really, really good. Really, it's probably the best TV show of the year, maybe, so far. I can't remember what else has is, is come out, but um, that's how I'm, I'm feeling at the moment. It's, it's, it's funny to talk about, too, because if you was to sit someone down and say, hey, watch the first episode, the first episode's so interesting because it purposely tries to play uh, everything PG, like literally and figuratively, it's like, hey, where, are, where where animation looks like you're watching a Justice League show. Hey, there's no blood and everything. And then, of course, the, that's all because of the big payoff at the end. And then for people who don't know what, what the source material is and everything, that's like, holy fuck, what the hell am I watching? And then <laughs> each episode just gets worse and worse when it comes to, like, violence and things. And, you know, the title just kept having more blood thrown on it each episode when it would come up with Invincible. Um, and I think if, if you don't know anything about this, you could quickly go from... This just looks like a typical superhero show in that first episode too. Oh, it's a parody of the Justice League. I guess it's a dark comedy. I guess it's like Kick-Ass or something. Like it's just going to be old jokes and silliness or whatever. But then by the time you get to the eighth episode, you're like, wow, there's actually a lot of, like there's a lot of violence here, but there's also weirdly a lot of heart. Like there's mm. a really emotional depth to everything that's happening in the, the season finale and everything. So I guess that's why the show works. It's It really hits... Uh, I think for every note the show tries to hit, be that comedy, violence, uh, whatever else, uh, emotional highs, emotional lows, everything like that, it just works. From writing to the the cast, like the stellar cast, everyone's amazing. So, yeah, I, I think it's uh, fantastic. And I think having a a show that is animated but still gets given the the premium runtime of whatever it is, you know, 40 to 50 minutes, whatever they felt like doing or whatever, you know, like having an animated show get treated with that sort of seriousness that you usually get for live action shows. Um, I think is, yeah, really, 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 really great. So good shit. Yeah. Uh, 
fantastic. Um, I wasn't uh, super impressed, I think, starting off. like it, I don't think the animation is fantastic, uh, but it gets the job done. Um, and I think they... I feel like they may have cut a couple of corners towards the end um, of this episode. Like, some of the stuff where he's over Invincible's body, like, his face just looked a little bit odd. Omni-Man, like, he's yelling at uh, him at the end. I think they just cut some corners on the facial animation, that kind of stuff. I, I would say, do you remember the budget that the boys had for season one and then how much yep. more money they got for season two? Uh, yeah, that's that's what this is going to be. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, but, yeah, they did a great job bringing it to life. Um, uh yeah, and like obviously that first episode, it's like really impressive when you look back on it that they were so restrained until Omni Man snapped and oh. <laughs> is killed. it even a snap? It literally just comes out of nowhere. You think like, oh, what's happening? Well, and yeah, just- I guess he enacted his plan or whatever. <laughs> yeah, you know that the, the entire time he's he's been a villain and like freaking J.K. Simmons, am I right? Uh, I think that last episode was super impressive. Like, it it's still seared in my mind. Just some of the dialogue that <laughs> J.K. Simmons had, um, like saying, trying to explain to 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 uh, Mark why <laughs> why he's right and like fully believing why he needs to like get on board that Just they're, the they're delivery- a model almost. The delivery of some of the, the stuff he says just makes it sound so much like when he's, he's when Mark says, "Oh, you know, what about Mum or whatever? You loved her," and he's like, "She was a pet." Yeah, I, I liked your mum, but she was more like a pet. You, but just the way he delivers the line with just the and then Sandra O oh, ultimate oh, okay, no. coldness. Yeah, Sandra is really good. It's like, I mean, everyone's good. I don't think this, everyone cast this in the is show an is insane just, cast as well. Yeah, it really say. is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I know I rattled off all those names before. But then you've got on top of that, you got people like they had Lauren Cohen, uh, Sun Quinn, Martin Green, uh, Lenny James, uh, freaking Seth Rogen, Mahersha Ali, Ezra Miller, uh, they had Mark Hamill, <laughs> Clancy Brown, John Hamm, Jonathan Groff, like so many like very cool people. Um, Seth, Seth, yeah, I said Seth Rogen is. Uh, okay. Uh, Alan the Alien, he'll be back. Uh, Justin Rowland, Justin Rollins, the king of animation at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and of course, Reginald Vel Johnson um, as Principal Winslow from in the <laughs> original Vel Johnson High School, uh, which is a joke in the comics. Um, yeah, fantastic. You know, um, was that? <laughs> I don't know where to go from here. Uh, it's, it's just praising the show. How do you feel, I guess, about Mark's story? Like, obviously, I I think the weakest thing for me was his, the relationship with... Yeah, that's my... <laughs> my one com- my biggest complaint about this show, and it just could not be changed because it's... it's, I, it's it how the same complaint source material. The source material. But the... the Amber the, Mark like, relationship. Yeah. yeah, like, and it's not even like, oh, fuck her, she's a bad character, I just don't want him to be of her. I liked her fine. Like, she's, like, you're quickly, like, she's a, a good person who, want, you know, she's helping out at the um, soup kitchen or whatever the whatever it is. Um, you know, like, you're quickly on board, like, she seems like a nice person or whatever, but it's just, it just seems tropey, and I don't really like it with the whole... Oh, he's hiding a secret identity, so he keeps doing things that are pissing off her off and whatever else. Because you're like, like ultimately, if you take think about it from Listen, her we side, had, it's like we've already lived through ten seasons <laughs> of Smallville. Yeah, yes. I'm, I mean, maybe that's why <laughs> I hate it so much because they did so much of that in that show, and it, it just. And I remember not hating it as much then. Maybe by the the end of the run, but I just feel like. I was watching it in this. I'm like, this better fucking end by the end of this season. Or else I'm going to be fucking like, I was like, they better not be just fucking around. Like, oh my God, I could not have taken like this stretched out. It just was doing my head in. But that, that is my one. If I was to pick one thing, I actually just dis- disliked, like straight up disliked about this first season. That is it. That is my one dislike. I don't really have any other complaints though. No. Like character wise, writing wise, anything like that. Yeah. So, 
I think um, they did a good job building out the entire, like, cast, I guess. Of course, the show's called... Invincible, but you get a fair b- amount of time with the Guardians of the Globe, uh, getting to know all of them. Um, you get the mystery of what Robot's up to all season. I think that was done really well um, with the Mauler twins um, and him. Yeah, and for the most part, it seems like it's all going to tie in, too. Like, yeah. With what Robot's def- doing. You're like, you're like, is this part of the same plot line? Like, what's happening? And then it's not, so. Yeah, it definitely feels like a complete season and not eight-ish, eight episodes, you know? Yeah. Which it easily could have. Um, there's definitely a complete arc and it feels... It definitely had a satisfying ending, even though... It really wasn't satisfying. The satisfying ending is our hero getting beaten to a pulp. His ass absolutely handed it to him. Uh, but I mean, like, the, the story is, which it's just, season one's an origin story. It yes. is Mark discovering his powers. It's Mark learning how to use his powers. It's um, And then ultimately it's Mark discovering the truth of his father. And then the, the, the big moment for him as a character is obviously... Um, whether or not he decided to side with his dad or not you know because you know like alternate timeline he says all right dad if that's what you think's best i guess i'll help you destroy Mm. earth kind of thing so that is his uh uh defining character characteristic kind of going forward i guess um he may not be (laughs) invincible but he definitely is strong-willed enough to uh, withstand all that punishment, but also the, I guess the, the the trauma inflicted by all that at the same time. What do you guys hear at the end of the show? I mean, yeah, um, yeah, they definitely built his arc up. Do you think it was overly violent <laughs> this last episode? No, nah, like they overdid fantastic. it. <laughs> Loved it. It was great. It's awesome. See, I think. It's no more violent than the way it's portrayed in the comic. And no, it's no more violent. That, like, Robert Kirkman's Walking Dead comics are so much more violent than the show, right? And why is mm. the show not as violent? Because it's live action, it's on AMC, and they, they've got a network rating. And they it's harder to things. do. Yeah, it's harder to do, action. but also they just can't show certain things anyway. Mm. So, A, this is on Amazon, and you've got a little bit more freedom than a network show. And B, it's in animation. So you can have a lot more of the stylized comic book style violence without it being uh, ridiculous and laughable. Whereas if it was live action, you may not be able to do that. And of course, interestingly, they're doing a live action adaptation of this as well, which Kirkman has said um, when I was listening to the Kind of Funny podcast that he was on recently, a couple of weeks ago, maybe a month back. Whenever Invisible yeah. started, he was on it, right? Um, and in that he got like he got asked about it and he said there's going to be a lot of like it, it sounded like the live action ones the one that will go off like off book yeah it's it's not going to strictly comic uh adapt the comics as is whereas this show is we're adapting the comics maybe with some slight tweaks you know we can stretch out scenes add more dialogue this sort of stuff but for the most part i definitely feel like his mom like, had more than previous yeah but like the core storyline yeah. And call like moment to moment core of the big action kind of scene. Stuff, yeah. yeah, like it's like we're just straight up adapting the the comic book. Whereas the live action one's going to change that, and that means that you probably won't get the same level of violence because they just won't be able to do it. And depending on where that show ends up, they just you know like it would be harder. So I don't I don't think the action's any more over the top than it is in the comics. And if you're going to do it, this is the place to do it. I mean, yeah. I mean that train sequence. That was a lot of bodies. <laughs> <laughs> like, how would you do that in live action? You just wouldn't be But I mean, the thing is, I don't think the violence is mind-numbingly uh, like switches you off to the po- like. I don't think it ever reached a point where you're just like, "Oh, I'm sick of seeing this." Like, th- it, they had one scene, and then they'll have some drama and some conversation, like, and then from one drastic event to the next drastic event of like the gore and the violence, it all made sense and all led up to yep. that file scene where his dad's just absolutely destroying his face and turning it into mashed potatoes. But even if you're sitting there wincing, you know, like you're sitting there watching it going like, oh, this is kind of fucked up. The, the reason it all ultimately works off is because his dad's like, well, what are you going to do in a thousand years if you're, um, if you're here, you're here, who the hell are you even going to have? And amongst all the fucked up face and everything, Mark responds, I'd still have you dad. 
you know, yeah. like so it's like they they Fuck amongst man. the amongst the all the the blood gore and everything, they're still like, yeah, we got some, we're gonna hit you with some feels now. So yeah, yeah and I think that's why the show works. It's like because they they don't they they're telling a serious story amongst all this ridiculous gore. Yeah. So <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, just these last couple of episodes, like the obviously there's been violence before, obviously in this the season. Like obviously when they're taking down the machine head, like when yeah, they well, all I mean, get from the end of the first episode. Like- well, I guess that's true. <laughs> I forgot about that for a second. But like, it's been. I feel like it's been like dulled out. It's like not every single episode is like murder everybody to no the whole 30, 40 minutes. Well, you couldn't um, imagine if we'd seen something like this before. It wouldn't be as impactful. No, as the no. the finale. So even when you have um. The, I can't remember the character's name, but the dude at the college, university, whatever, who was doing the experimentations. Mm. Like, there's a lot of fucked up sort of body ho- horror there. Like, if yes. that was live action, that would be a lot scarier, I think. Much harder uh, to do, yeah. Yeah, to do. Um, and that's sort of fucked up as well. But it's even all that sort of stuff, it doesn't it's just, you could never explain how much <laughs> when you get to the finale. Like, it's like nothing has prepared you seven episodes prior, whatever else we've done. I mean, even there's a scene where he gets his ass handed to him by, um, a Johnny Pride mate from Magic the Gathering. Uh, that's a <laughs> reference that. <laughs> Gosh. You know how I mean, though? The, the whatever. Yeah, the, 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 the bear lion yeah, white the, thing. Yeah, that thing, yeah. Um, and that's quite fucked up, and obviously ends up in hospital. With his dad there. watching on of, the entire time. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of violence there and everything, so. Yeah. But yeah, just nothing prepared. I him. guess he also. Omni Man went and murdered an entire planet, kind of as well. Uh. Yeah, I think it was more cartoony though, because they're not human characters, so yeah, your brain that's just doesn't. You um, yeah, basically, yeah. That too. <laughs> um, although, yeah, and I guess the previous episode he did slice uh, a mortal in half, like across the waist. And I do love that this episode opened with like raining blood, followed by his body falling on the ground. <laughs> great, in- great like- opening. <laughs> The, I think one of the most gross ones I thought was actually just the... I like how this is an overall spoiler cast for season one, but we're just... I mean, of course you're going to talk about the finale. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so what else are you, what else are you going to talk about? Um, the, the part where Mark saves the, the dude from the fighter jet or whatever. Yes. And then Omni-Man just comes in and he's like, what did you do that for? And then he, like, he basically just puts his hand up and the dude's face just explodes. I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, a lot of visuals. Um I, yeah, I just want to mention the casting again. Obviously, Sandra O, oh, amazing. Like, I think uh, she brought so much to that mother role that I feel like in the comics she was kind of... She was there, but she wasn't, like, as involved what? as... I think it's the memory. delivery, like, in scenes, especially where, um, you know, like Mark gets his powers and he has that in the first episode where he has that scene where he's like, I'm not going to do that, Mom. Or, you know, it was like something like take the garbage out. So I can't even remember what it was. It was like something. Mm. And then she, she, like, stands up to him straight away and is like... You think you're a big man? Or, you know, I can't remember the exact line, but you know the moment where she, yeah. she just doesn't back down and that kind of sets up the sort of character she is and the delivery that Sandra brings to it kind of just sells you on that, that she's just not scared at all. Um, and even when she's facing off with Omni-Man, you know, and she's like, why'd you do it and everything? And she's, she's like, I'm going to bed, fuck you. Like, And she doesn't, like, there's not a moment of, like, he could kill her, but she she just is not scared because yeah, she's definitely set up as a strong um strong character yeah uh and then also i want to shout out uh walton goggins as Ce- cecil cecil um uh, who i wouldn't imagine as cecil prior to this but i can't imagine anybody else now uh, i think he, he couldn't do it in live action i think that's the no thing. yeah um but yeah amazing is the you know the the guy in the chair i guess <laughs> the the, uh, the man behind everything uh, the, the other perfect casting is Jason Manzikas as Rex Explosion. Amazing. Totally on, po- totally on. Perfect. Totally annoying. <laughs> Which is kind of his stick. Mm. I mean, Zachary Quinto's robot, I felt like was kind of sort of on good casting as well. Like just perfect voice for that sort of character and everything like that. Um, I really enjoyed um, Gillian Jacobs as well. Yes. Yeah, as, as competent Britta. Yeah, basically. <laughs> yeah, she's actually fixing things, not breaking them. So. <laughs> yeah, uh-huh. yeah. So, uh, and again, they did a fantastic job. They kind of set up season two as well, like foreshadowing different things that are 
um, going to potentially come in the future. Um, you know, it, did this season make you want to go back and read the comics? <laughs> so I feel like that's uh, something that's going to happen in the next yeah, 12 months. I very much would not gonna like wait. to. I mean, I already own like several of them. I just can't remember which ones I've read. That's the problem. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'd have to start from the start, uh, obviously. Um, yeah, I think I will. I would be surprised if Invincible's like sold out in comic book stores across America and wherever else at this stage. But yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so yeah, we've been confirmed season two and season three are coming to Amazon Prime. Uh, we clearly really enjoyed it and hopefully we'll be discussing it again later, like towards the end of the year when we're doing our best of 2021 stuff. Uh, I can't imagine any... I can't imagine right. any new series topic this at the moment. Top 10, uh, uh, well, the top five TV moments is definitely currently probably topped by... Uh, yeah, what, what what's your top moment then? I mean, it has, it's just, it would just be Mark versus Omni-Man. Like, that, the the first half of the finale, right? That's a moment. I don't know. I feel, like, I the fir- I feel like him taking out the Guardians of the Galaxy is like... I don't know. If if I was to pick like if we was if we had to roll it down into like a, a shorter moment, it would be the I'd still have you, Dad. That would yeah. be my uh, yeah. yeah. That's pretty fantastic. Just to, uh, yeah. All right. Uh, let us know what you thought of first season of <laughs> Invincible. Uh, you can let us know on Twitter by going to explosion.com slash Twitter. Or you can jump to the Discord at explosion.com slash Discord. Leave us a review, either on Apple Podcasts or on Podchaser. And if you like this episode, thought us with a dollar, head on over to our Kofi page at explosion.com slash support. Buy us a coffee. Every little bit helps. Thank you very much for listening. And until next time, keep watching stuff, I guess. I also hope they keep the title card thing going. I don't know. What do you, what do you add to it more? It's, Full of life. Find more ways, no, like find more ways to say, to include <laughs> invincible in a sense. It's oh, okay. Yeah.